Coming up towards six minutes after seven o'clock in Trinidad and Tobago as we continue, as we move into the second hour of Morning Edition on uh, this Monday. Very good of you to be with us with all the many different options that you have available to you on any morning. Well, let's talk about COVID-19 because it has dominated 2020. 2020, indeed, uh, every yearly wrap-up, every uh, review of 2020 will be overwhelmed by issues associated with the pandemic. Uh, it's a, it is a worldwide conversation, the issue now of the vaccination, which continues to pick up pace locally. Just last week, we had the first vaccinations, Pfizer-BioNTech in the United Kingdom. A 90-year-old woman was the first to receive. Today, as we understand it, the first vaccinations will be administered in the United States, in a country where at least 50 percent of the population surveyed don't want to take the vaccination because of this whole anti-vaxxer movement. Uh, the first doses, as I mentioned, of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine are being sent out to distribution centers, marking the start of the biggest inoculation program in the country's history. On the local front, the Minister of Health, Terence Dial Singh, says the COVID-19 vaccine will be free for persons living in Trinidad and Tobago. Under the COVAX facility, Trinidad and Tobago will be receiving vaccines approved by the World Health Organization. To date, no vaccine has been approved by the WHO. And we are joined now by Dr. Sitharaman Hariharan, Professor of Anesthesia and Critical Care Medicine, and indeed a member of uh, the uh, Medical Council uh, of Tr Trinidad and Tobago, uh, of the Medical Association of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Professor, very good morning to you. Good to have you with us uh, this morning as you enjoy the uh, rays of the early morning sun. And I have to tell you, as we had that discussion before we went on air, that background that you have with you, if it is real, we need to get an image of it for our Trinbago a nice feature wh wh whenever possible. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Mr. Mohammed. And, um, you know, this is really uh, uh, in Santa Margarita, just behind me. Yes, well, I will send you a snapshot. Indeed. Yes. We look forward to those images being sent to us. Thank you very much indeed for that. Just give us yes. your perspective now on the vaccine. Uh, yes. And uh, indeed, it, it, it's, it's, it, it's efficacy, it's effectiveness, uh, because these are very early days with the early distribution of the vaccine. Give us your perspective, sir. Yeah. Um, the, the one thing before I forget, I wanted to correct only one statement uh, which you made. Uh, the WHO doesn't approve of any vaccines. I mean, the, uh, the uh, FDA and the drug control authorities and the individual countries, EMA, European Medical Agency, those are the um, those are the, the the authorities for approving a vaccine. The COVAX program of WHO is actually a 172 country. Uh, a legal agreement they have two forms of agreement one is a, a committed agreement another is an optional agreement where they pay um, uh, 1.6 us dollar if it is a uh, uh, committed and if it is optional 3.6 uh, us dollar per vaccine and order um, the the amount of vaccine for their respective countries um, uh, you know to cover an, a range of 10 to 50 percent of their population depending on their affordability but um, for actually um, a herd immunity to develop um, you know we do have um, epidemiological formulae to actually calculate uh, based on the incubation period and the or not of this particular uh, uh, covid virus um, the, the the herd immunity will develop only if 55 to 60 percent of um, uh, a particular um, you know a region the people are immunized either by i mean actually by a vaccine you know the by, by disease it's going to be a, a disaster so the vaccine should cover 55 to 60 percent and i think and i'm sure that you know our country has entered into it because it's 172 countries and we uh, trinidad has entered into the uh, covax arrangement and paho is liaising with the ministry of health for the supply so they do not paho or who do not approve of a vaccine they take an approved vaccine and equitably distribute um, amongst the countries now coming back to the the efficacy and the efficiency of the vaccine and i must tell you that even um, you know i won't be surprised that if you do a poll in trinidad uh, you will get um, um, you know at least um, a, a, a sizable number of people who are um, you know anti-vaxxers um, actually i am the president of the bioethics society of the english-speaking caribbean i wrote a uh, an article um, recently in the last year, you know, how um, the anti-vaxxers are actually uh, causing havoc. Uh, when you see the, um, from the 15th century and uh, the growth of modern medicine, 
the one uh, uh, thing which has definitely improved the longevity, the uh, life expectancy of people is vaccine number one. Number two is then public hygiene and all other treatment, including my own specialty of uh, critical care medicine, intensive care, all these things come secondary to that. Uh, the, 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 the major, major, major benefit of having a vaccine uh, has been well established in science from the you know 17th century time uh, we, we if you see this uh, from the 17th century the public health measures uh, uh, you know increased the longevity and then when we got um, a, you know louis pasteur i mean everybody you know uh, uh, the jenner scopox vaccine and that actually revolutionized the whole thing but uh, even when uh, in 1919 when spanish flu was um, was around um, the nobody knew which organism was uh, was actually they never knew about a virus uh, they knew about bacteria, but uh, they never knew about a virus. So since then, we have come a very long way. And this particular Pfizer uh, and biotech vaccine and the Moderna vaccine is the latest technology. And I must tell you that it has never been so far employed in a vaccination uh, trial. And that is why, the, you know, the I, I do feel that the, 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 the co, the, they, they quote 90 to 95% efficacy because of that. Because what it does is that, you know, we do all have something called a messenger RNA, which is a, which is a, a um, you know, in all of our cells in the cytoplasm, they have a, a small messenger, which will go and, and, and actually produce proteins. The messenger RNA is what is important to produce new proteins. Now, what they have done is the, the messenger RNA is now coded to actually produce the spike protein of the COVID virus in our own cells, in the, in the cytoplasm. So this, when this mRNA is injected into our into our muscle, it it, uh, it is actually protected by um, a nanotechnology, nanocapsules, uh, liposomal capsules, and that is why it took so long. You know, the mRNA, uh, the pr producing mRNA was there existing for a long time, but uh, how to protect it? Because uh, if you inject it without the protection, it will get denatured. So they now produce the the, the liposomes, which is a nanotechnology. So that is why it's very expensive. So the mRNA is now lodged into these nanocapsules, which will get into our cells. And then it will actually stimulate our own cells to produce the spike protein alone of that va uh, virus. And then when, they, when the protein comes in, now the other immunological system will come in and think that, you know, there is a foreign protein here and produce antibodies. And that is why the, the, the effect of this particular vaccine is actually very, uh, you know, highly, highly effective than uh, many other existing vaccine, uh, flu vaccine, measles vaccine, and, uh, you know, all other vaccines. This is highly efficacious because of this new technology. So, so, so is, Professor, if you, yeah. would allow me, if you would allow me to ask you, if you got, if right after this interview, you got a call from Health Minister Terence Dial Singh saying he's gotten some advanced uh, samples or, 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 or bits of the of, of the vaccine, and he he wants you to uh, to, to wants you to to, to to take it. Would you would you take the vaccine? I'll be the first in the line. I'll be the first person in the line because I'll tell you there is enough scientific evidence. I mean, there are lots of these conspiracy theories going on in the social media that this is a mRNA vaccine. It will get into a genetic code, which is co complete rubbish because, you know, mRNA, uh, um, I must say that, you know, so far there is no evidence because it, uh, uh, as I told you, it is in the cytoplasm. Our uh, genetic code is in, in the nucleus of the cell, which is a DNA. This is mRNA. So, um, so there is no way it can. I mean, but one thing, one caveat, I will tell you that, you know, as I told you from the beginning uh, of this particular discussion with the COVID, the co I mean, COVID is, is a textbook definition of an emerging infectious disease. So we don't know many things. We have to be humble uh, in that. But safety wise, I will tell you that there is absolutely no uh, whatsoever, uh, you know, anxiety to be there because it is very well tested. I will tell you the uh, Pfizer was tested in 33,000 people and um, and um, the moderna they are doing it in 44000 people so most of these um, tests and that is why it took so so long for fda you know because even though the president of the united states wanted it approved long back they they don't compromise on this safety issue and i i am very sure that you know this is very well tested and clinically um, um, proven that you know the the adverse effects are extremely min minuscule so that you know you know uh, when whenever see i'll tell you in any intervention in modern medicine has its own benefits and risks because we are even a tablet paracetamol 
you know, if, you, if paracetamol has its own um, side effects. I, I wouldn't say that any tablet is without the side effects. But what we do here in every intervention in modern medicine, we see that if the benefit far outweigh the risk, that is when we get, we, we actually, uh, you know, recommend an in, uh, intervention in modern medicine. That is exactly what is being followed by FDA. And, and they have gone through the, the, the whole gamut of procedures. And the only difference between the other vaccines and here is that FDA would have uh, waited for three to four years um, for um, to, to see how these things evolve and then give a full authorization. And because of this particular uh, reason why COVID, they had to do um, authorization early, that's why they call it a quote unquote emergency for emergency use, authorization for emergency use. That doesn't mean anything else other than saying that, okay, um, you know, if, we, if it is a other a normal times, other, other, otherwise, uh, you know, we, do, we are not locked down and, you know, it's not a pandemic, we could have waited for some more years to actually give a full authorization, which is, cannot be happening here because we are losing 375 billion US dollar every month. That is not a joke. I mean, so we need to get uh, things going. And so there are, there are um, uh, you know, reasons why they do that. But the other thing I wanted to tell you with the vaccine is that, you know, vaccine, uh, they, they have not done one thing in the, in, the, in the clinical studies so far, is that, you know, when a person had some asymptomatic COVID um, infection, whether um, uh, vaccine uh, will make them completely, you know, non-shedders or uh, safe. That is not true. Uh, they have not tested it. If, if you already had a COVID infection, if you have a vaccine, uh, it will boost your immunity. But if you had viral particles, you can still shed it. And that is why the scientists are saying that, you know, even after, um, you know, taking a vaccine, please wear your face mask. And that is that is the thing which is, I... Is, that a, is that a concern for you, Professor, and indeed other medical experts, that when people get the vaccine, they will believe that now it's back to normal. Get rid of the mask, get rid of the hand sanitizers, get rid of everything that people will say, now it's back to regular living once they get the two stages of this vaccine um, that, that is what we have to educate people because you know that has not been established so far and so until uh, the public health regulations dictate that yes we have eliminated uh, COVID from this particular country because of the herd immunity I would uh, advise strongly for anybody to actually uh, wear the mask. I mean, it's a very low tech thing which we all can do. And it is very well established. Even as late as November, we had a study uh, from Germany, which actually very well established the, 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 the efficacy of a, a, a simple mask. And I, I don't know why people don't want to wear that. And uh, it is only to prevent shedding of the virus. And, and uh, I am sure that, you know, if we 60% uh, of our population gets um, the vaccine, and within a month or two, we will be able to actually say that, you know, declare that we are COVID free. At that time, we can go back to normal. But until then, I would uh, implore, I would uh, beg people to just uh, follow the same norms. We have uh, gotten used to it for the, from last March now. We are going to reach a year. And I don't think we should, uh, we should be complacent now. And uh, I think we should, even with the vaccine, uh, because there is no data that they, 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 whether they are now actually testing it. Probably by January, February, we will get some results that, you know, uh, whether the vaccine vaccinated people are shedding virus, they are testing it. And uh, we don't have a clear cut proof until now. Professor, thank you very much, as always, for taking the time to, to indeed shed light on uh, this issue of vaccines and vaccinations. And indeed, uh, as, as you've said, you'd be first in the line if you got the call uh, from the health minister uh, this morning, which you might very well get. You never know. But, uh, Professor, thank you very much, as always, for taking thank the time. So and for and don't, forget, don't forget, we, we've given you an assignment to send us those images of that, that lovely setting that you have behind you. Thank you very Definitely. much indeed. Thank you. You're more than welcome, Professor Sistaram Hari Haran of the Trent Tobago Medical Association. Uh, ma making it clear, uh, all the prevailing science shows that the, the vaccines that are, are now available in, in some parts of the world uh, are safe in the vast majority of cases. There will always be a tiny percentage uh, of issues. And indeed, it, it is about uh, that, that constant discussion with those who are against vaccines. And as I said, uh, a latest survey in the United States where vaccines are supposed to be administered for the first time today is showing that only 50% of those surveyed will want to take the vaccine. Uh, 
so, so, so again, we'll see how, how that goes. 720, approaching 721 in Trinidad and Tobago. Let's check on the traffic situation, shall we, via uh, traffictt.com, where no early morning sunshine, a bit of cloud on the eastern horizon, no doubt, but the traffic is flowing freely both ways. Uh, a, a bit heavier coming northwards, but still some vehicles heading southwards, hopefully all maintaining the speed limit and due courtesy on the roads. We'll be right back. Yeah. Me pandate a 